Hi Glamour, I'm Haley Steinfeld and today I will be breaking down some of my iconic looks from film and television. Where it all began, True Grit, 2010. So this was my first film. We, we meet Maddie as she's in this, you know, beautiful silhouette of, of this dress that Mary created uh, and when she realizes her mission. Um, she takes on a whole new wardrobe, something that she feels she can function in, uh, be quick on her feet, and um, do whatever she needed to do to avenge her father's death. You know, doing a period piece and sort of being launched into it directly just through the wardrobe alone, putting on that hat, I'll never forget the feeling that that, that gave me. Uh, the coat, feeling the weight of that coat and strapping it up with that belt and putting those boots on and going to work every day um, was such an incredible and empowering feeling and, and Mary is unbelievable and to watch her work was, was amazing. Romeo and Juliet, 2013. We know Juliet to be this young, innocent, sort of fearless and carefree young woman who is rebellious and excited about, about everything that's going on in her life with this Romeo of hers. And I think the wardrobe perfectly complements all of those things because it has that sort of effortless feel. It's so effortlessly stunning and beautiful and it represents who she is and where she comes from. It doesn't feel so contrived. It feels youthful uh, in, in the best way and, and tasteful, which um, I think really also represent the character very well. Even the, the uh, hair pieces that they incorporated. Um, you would see a detail on, on a dress and then you would see something similar tied into, into a, a hair accessory and uh, just done so delicately and tastefully. Edge of 17, 2016, Carla Headland. This was, this was very fun. So Carla pulled a lot of vintage for this, which I always love. But I knew that this jacket was this vintage men's uh, jacket and I, I loved it. I loved this sort of tomboy-ishness that, that uh, Nadine has and that jacket. Actually ended up being a lot more of a sort of staple than I think I thought it was. It's kooky and it's different and it's quirky and she's wearing platform sneakers with mismatched socks. Um, and I actually, there were a couple pieces from my own wardrobe that I, that I wore in this film. I had a shirt uh, that says, very busy doing nothing. And I felt like that was, that was Nadine. And I, I remember bringing in some of my own pieces uh, into one of my fittings. Not, uh, you know, necessarily with the hopes of them being in the film, but just, just to sort of lend themselves to some kind of like direction. Uh, and Carla was so amazing in, in collaborating with me and helping, you know, me uh, find who she was. But um, one of my favorite pieces is this Big Lebowski sweatshirt that Nadine wears, because I also feel like that could be one of her favorite movies. Or maybe I'm just biased, because it's one of mine. <laughs> Bumblebee, 2018. Very 80s feeling. A lot of like band tees. Music plays a huge part in this film. Charlie is, she's a mechanic. She's, she's always getting her hands dirty. She's got her, boots on the ground and she's always going to work. And so it was, it was important that she was in wardrobe that she felt comfortable in. And I think it was exciting for, for fans of, of the Transformers films to see this young female character in a different sort of wardrobe than we've seen um, in the past with these films. Um, and that was fun. That was fun to play into. Uh, and the color scheme is a little bit darker. It's a little moodier. I have these sort of shorts under my shorts, which was just kind of like a little Charlie thing. I don't quite remember how that happened. I don't know if that was like, you know, in fittings you're throwing things on and sometimes you throw something on for to see if it fits over something else. And I don't know if it was if it was something like that or if it was intentional, I don't quite remember, but I love that. It just, it's, it's like a weird, I've never seen that before. Um, probably wouldn't be mad if I never saw it again, but uh, I, I, I like it for Charlie. <laughs> Dickinson, 2019 to now. Dickinson holds such a special place in my heart. And as an executive producer of this show, I have been far more involved in this project than anything I've ever done uh, previously. Some of my favorite memories on Dickinson are working with Jen and not even, maybe not even necessarily actively working with her, but hearing her talk about what she has in mind for, for my character and, and the other characters for Emily Dickinson, her iconic white dress that we all know Emily to apparently have lived in. Um, 
and this incredible red uh, satin dress that um, has become such a symbolic part of, of the show. Uh, and the corsets and the layers and the petticoats. And the most exciting thing I think, and this was great because I got to see Jen totally geek out over the fact that our third and final season, um, we start to see a bit of change in the wardrobe, in the silhouette, because we are further along in time. It's the 60s, baby, if you will. Uh, and we got to sort of toy with a different silhouette, which was exciting for all of us girls too, because we got to we got to switch it up a little bit. I did this one scene uh, with Jane Krakowski, who plays Mrs. Dickinson, and I was wearing this stunning, authentic, from the 1800s nightgown. It was as fragile as could be, and the scene was, Emily uh, is in bed under the covers, and Mrs. Dickinson comes in and rips the covers off and says, let's go get out of bed, we're going to, I think they were going to the spa. They were having a spa day. Of course, we, we do the scene quite a few times, and, and <laughs> there was one take that Jane came and ripped the covers off, and I just heard a rip, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, what was that? And it was the sleeve of my beautiful, delicate nightgown, and of course they were like, the team was there and ready to sew it right back together, you would have never known, but it was just like, oh my god, not the thing from the 1800s. We've done so well. Um, Leave it to Jane. I'm just kidding. It was probably my fault. <laughs> Hawkeye 2021. It's a good thing I like the color purple. Um, I hope you do too, because you're going to be seeing a lot of purple in this show. Kate is born and raised in New York City, and I forever, since the very first time I came to New York, I think the first thing that caught my eye um, was the, the, the street style. I wanted Kate to have that sort of, that, that, that independence, that sort of strut that you see when you look out, you know, on the streets of New York City and, and, and she has this coat, there's another coat, um, and these ripped jeans uh, that uh, were Balenciaga, just saying. Um, and Doc Martens and these, you know, thick socks and, and the perfect white tee. There's also a purple sweatsuit that I wear in this show and I actually have to say, this is probably the most comfortable I've ever been. Uh, in anything I've acted in. I, I geeked out so hard in my fitting for that suit. I mean, it was literally, it was as if the suit was like broken down into a hundred different pieces that they all just sort of put together as it was on me. And it, I, I got to stand in the mirror and watch it come together. And I mean, you know, it's this is something that I've seen in the comics that we've all seen in the comics and there are different versions of this suit. And I was so eager to find out which one they were gonna land on for, for me, for this. Um, and I, yeah, couldn't be more excited uh, about it. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It has been so much fun taking a little trip down memory lane, looking at some of these crazy, fun, iconic, um, and exciting outfits. I uh, hope you enjoy. <laughs>